Welcome to Engineering Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host, and I do models. Let's get the right screen up there. It is part of my TTL 74 LS series logic chips here. We're looking at the 74 LS 75, a four, four bit bi stable latch. Now we are looking at um, two bits of it. We're not working with the full four bits for power consumption reasons. And if you look at the chip, there is a significant difference between this chip and our standard 74 LS series chips that we've already looked at. And it's that VCC is here and ground is over here, pin 12 and pin 5. 5 for VCC, 12 for ground. Now, you have a set of inputs on right here is your first set of two bistable latches and they're controlled by pin 13 and then you have pin 4 and this section of the chip that can it curls 3 and 4 so the reason I did um, just the two is just to hook up the 13 controls both latches the clock the the enable on both latches so if that's high you can make the um, actually if that's yeah if that's high you can make them um, you can enable the latches and we're going to take a look at that now let's uh, pop over to the overhead camera now it's very dim and dark and um, you'll see why when I turn on the power the LEDs are very very dim um, it is because I am pushing this chip to the max limit. I had blue LEDs in there and it was too much voltage. Um, I'm going to start having to put uh, transistors to uh, switch the LEDs on from the chip because I'm just pulling too much uh, milliamps from the chip itself. So if I press either one of the green or red, I didn't label them this time, um, either of the green or red, it doesn't do anything, but if I enable the chip and I can latch latch one and then I can unenable and I've latched this one here now if I want to latch this one and keep and latch this one I just hold this and press this but if you notice this one dropped its latch because this one was no longer latched when I press this button so if I want them both to latch I'll clear it out if I want them both to latch I hold them both down and I pulse it and they're both storing that one bit of data so you have to make sure that because the way these are connected with the uh, the one and two on a with this on one pin and this on one pin you have to make sure you have the values you want to latch onto your one and two or three and four respectively at the same levels that you want to latch them when you go to latch so you're gonna you're gonna latch both of them at one time you're gonna latch two bits of data at one time so I want to take a look at this circuit here and I want to probe around in it for some voltages because it is acting super weird with the logic levels I'm getting out so I'm going to pull off my probing probes and I want to see what kind of voltages I'm getting now technically with a TTL chip and I will while I'm letting the thing boot up I will I'm letting the meter boot up here and let me get the meter software running and we're going to search for the 74 ls and we're just going to look at the output resistors on this chip. It has output resistors, so I'm really actually dropping a lot of resistance on this. I normally have this data sheet pulled up, but I prepped this video last night and I 
I um, apparently my computer restarted in the morning. No, I'm not supposed to let it leave it on. Let me see if I can find this here. Okay, here it is right here. So let's go back to this one. Oh, we're on there. Okay, so let's look at this uh, LS75. This is on the outputs, and if you see here, it has a 220 ohm resistor to limit current right up here. So the output is protected by a current limiting resistor. So I want to check the current and the amperage through that. Let's see if I can come up here and go to my DMM. And I want to see current. So I'm going to grab my current probe. Let's go here and we'll go to this. Is that going to work? No, it's not going to work. Oh, you know what? Nope. Well, I'm having a having a heck of a time here guys there we go okay we're gonna get that working so I have my current probe I label it current and I just leave it plugged in all the time and then I unhook my other one and we're gonna measure some current through one of these LEDs here so I'm going to set my meter to current AC current and I'm going to put it on the screen for you guys and I am going to, we're going to measure the current through this one here because I can just pull this link out and stick my probes, stick my probes in there and we're getting nothing and if I set that to light There we go. So that's lit. And I have the probes in backwards, of course. Why not? Okay, so we have a hundred and eighty-four, eighty-five microamps running through that LED. So let's take the 470 ohm resistor out. Let's put this link back in here link into pin 1 and we're going to pull this resistor right there and then we're going to go into here and into here and the LED is definitely brighter but we're only getting 275 microamps so even with a resistor out of line with it we're still getting a very low output signal on the chip let's take a look at the chip and see what we have let me go into DC voltage DC voltage Did that work DC voltage let's get rid of my current probe because I don't want that anymore because I'm not measuring current and let's measure some voltages across we'll put my wrist resistor back in So let's measure the voltage across the chip here. We are getting a voltage of only 3 volts. That's odd. Okay, let's, let's just turn the power supply up to 9 volts like it's supposed to be. It was down to 5 volts and I didn't catch that. Normally I leave that one set. Okay, so now it's working so much better now. Okay. So, there, there. They're both set. Clear it. Okay, so that is working. Let's go back and let's see what the current is now with the two resistors. So, let's check the current in this one here. So, pin one in the LED. Yeah, that's of course that needs to be switched 
That could have been bad. Okay, current. Alright, so current through that LED is 3 milliamps. So currently we're running 3 milliamps through the LED, which is perfectly fine for one of these outputs. But what would it be if we pulled out this resistor? So we have there, there, and 21 milliamps. So definitely don't do that. Definitely put a resistor in line. So 21 milliamps is way too much. I mean, an LED can take up to 30, but pulling 20 milliamps from one one output of this chip with two outputs that's drawing 40 milliamps, that chip's going to get hot. So we're going to stick with the 470 ohm resistors. I have seen people run these at uh, without the cur extra current limiting resistors with the fact that it has the resistors here on the output but that is not enough resistance for the 5 volts 20 milliamps is too much to pull from one of these circuits so that is going to do it on let me get the this up there so I can get a screenshot later so that's it for this guys you can visit me on these links of social media you can also visit me on Patreon, and I use all singlet um, test bench gear. Uh, this was a digital multimeter SDM3045X, and the power supply was an SPD3303XE. You can help me afford this equipment by visiting me on Patreon or going to my GoFundMe page in the description. Thank you so much, and have a fantastic day.